what's your first memory of when you move from preparation phase to okay now something's going down phase? Well, what's the first memory you have of that? Well, they you know they told us you know hey let's get ready we might be you know we might have to go out and, and go up up the river or something like that and uh, to get people we out didn't to get know Americans what out was going to happen. Yeah. If they can get to the coast, we can get them out. If the people who are, first we're talking about Cambodia, right? right. Then, then we switch to Vietnam. Right. So if the Americans and some of the Cambodians who need, if they're able to get to the coast, we can get them. Otherwise, we might need to go in and get them. Yeah, yeah. we didn't know what the situation was going to be. It ended right. up being uh, all air, pretty much air. Uh, and yeah. the helicopters came from. I'm not sure, maybe the Hancock and the Blue Ridge, uh, not the Blue Ridge, but uh, I'm not sure where they came from. I think if I remember right, I think the mid, the Midway was out there, yeah, the Blue there Ridge were, was out there. There was a helicopter carrier there too. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know did, the name of it. Did right any there. of those, so let's let's focus first on, on the, the Cambodia operation which is, is much less known. I think most Americans who know something about Vietnam, they at least have in their mind, mm -hmm. you know, the famous image, the famous photos of Saigon in right. April 30, 1975. I don't think most Americans know, you know, that there was a, a similar evacuation in Cambodia, although it was much smaller, mm -hmm. right? But what, what sort of things do you remember about that first, that first operation, Operation Eagle Pool? Like if I, the numbers I have are, about 80 Americans, about 160 Cambodians evacuated. What 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 memories do you have of Operation Eagle Pool? Well, I just remembered, uh, uh, you know, the captain came on and said, uh, "This, you know, we're getting ready to uh, start the evacuation of Cambodia, and we don't know yet what's getting ready to happen." I'm basically sat there and tell, told us the truth, what's getting ready to happen. Yeah. Uh, the ship, yeah. they went to flight quarters and, and they had, uh, we weren't at general quarters, but we were in a height of readiness. Height okay, of yeah. readiness. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had three inch 50 guns. I, they had three inch bullets or three inch diameter and, you know. Just in case. About this long. Yeah. And, but they were. They were manned, and we didn't sure. know what was going to happen, and and uh, we were down in the hole, you know, with you know motors had been warmed up, and we didn't know what was happening, and and then one helicopter came in and dropped. It seems to me like maybe a dozen people uh, at the on the toss. Uh huh. Yeah, and then uh, did you see that? I, I saw hill. Yeah, we were down. You below. saw that hill come in. We were down below. We had to go up under the uh, under the mezzanine when the helicopter came in. Because yeah, we were they Americans or were they Cambodians or was it a mix? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I saw the people kind of exiting, and then from where we were, you know, they they went along a, a wing wall. Yeah, but I'm I've. Led to believe that they were uh, maybe embassy type folk. Okay, yeah, from the U.S. Embassy in, yeah. in Cambodia. Was that, so far as you remember, the only helo to land on the Thomson from as far as Eagle I know. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's switch to the much bigger operation. So here with Eagle Pool, we're talking about a, a you know an important but pretty small operation. Then we come to Operation Frequent Wind, having to do with Vietnam, and that's that. Those are the famous, you know, this yeah. these are this is linked to the famous images we have of Saigon falling in '75. So Eagle Pool is uh, mid-April, and then, but you're still on you're still on scene. So we you know, we steam to Subic Bay. Oh, you did. Okay. We steamed so, to Subic Bay and made pretty good time and. And uh, we pulled into port, and uh, that was we had a four-section duty section in my team, so it was my day to yeah. uh, be the duty driver and such. Right. And uh, 
everybody went to town and into a long ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got the word. It's, I mean, at like midnight, Liberty was canceled. Really? And they had curfew in, in the Philippines at the time, anyhow. But anyhow, they, they canceled. And we steamed right, right back. We were right on the back, basically. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's about two weeks between the evacuation mm -hmm. from Cambodia and the evacuation from Vietnam. Yeah. So what are the what are the th what are the things that most stand out in your mind when you think about Operation Frequent Wind and the evacuation? Now we're talking about the evacuation of thousands of people. I think about oh, I, I, if the numbers I have, I think about a thousand Americans, roughly something like um, five thousand South Vietnamese. I think something in that area. Um, what what are your what are your memories? What what stand out well, most in your mind about that? There's another incident. Hmm. That's just another incident. We were we were staying alone and, and we changed course and boy everybody started you know the Marines had uh, little forklifts, you know, all trained forklifts and stuff on the ship. Yeah. And they started moving pallets of uh, cigarettes, combat rations, pallets of them. They started moving them out. And the ship was, you know, they were busy. They were doing stuff that out of the, out of the usual, out of the ordinary. And they were, yeah. and, uh, and then we, we, we came along, there were some other uh, ships there. Uh, one of them was the Dubuque. It was an LPD, I think LPD eight or six, eight. Mm -hmm. But there was a Beachmaster team on that boat too, and some of them had been. They came through the Panama Canal from the East Coast to get over there. Wow. And uh, and anyhow, one of my friends was on, was from the East Coast Beachmaster unit too. And he came across, came through the Panama Canal, and joined up with us. Yeah. So we 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 start all this movement, and something's going on. You know what's going on here? All right, guys, back to the security boat. And uh, so they floated, and uh, a couple. Uh, there were like four eight boats involved, I think. Two of them were loaded down with uh, rations, combat rations, yeah. or, or had a pretty good bunch on there. Yeah. And then uh, we were out, we stood off probably a couple of hundred yards off from them. And then there was another one that was people, that was, uh, there was a doctor and some corpsmen and such that went on board. Uh, immediately, the ship started winching up sea rats. Mm -hmm. uh, I skipped a stage in there. I, before we, before everything happened, uh, I went up to the whatever the bridge or whatever, and they have a big old set of binoculars. They call the big eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, where we were going, we were coming in close to shore. I mean, we were we were in close to shore, and it's like, what's going on here? And, and there were two ships over there, and I think one of them was the Pioneer Contender. Hmm. And the other one was... I can't remember. One of them had power, one of them didn't have power. Hmm. But from a distance, they looked black. And the closer we got, we realized that that black was heads. People. Plum full of people. Wow. Uh, and like I said, they were, they were 
pulling them combat rations off as fast as they could, you know, and uh, to give to the people on the boat. Yes, these and these are South Vietnamese refugees. Yes, they they were trying, they were fleeing, and and these ships they had hoped these freighters or whatever they were would, would take them away. Wow. And uh, like I say, one of them had power and one didn't. And they were so they were so full of people. They had the doctors and stuff. Yeah. They went on board and almost immediately returned. There was so much uh, there there were so many issues with you know dysentery and all, everything. Right. Because there how do you feed or how do you how does a thousand people maintain a daily life aboard something like that. I mean, it right. was just solid people. Now these are, so I gave numbers a minute ago, you know, a little bit less than a, a fewer than a thousand Americans and something like 5,000 South Vietnamese as a result of Operation Frequent Wind, but that's that was intentional. That was U.S. Helos. What you're talking about is the other wave of people trying to get out of South Vietnam. Yes, this people was desperate to get out of South Vietnam. Wind. Yeah, this is prior to Frequent Wind. So, I mean, so how are you processing that? I mean, what do you, what's going through your mind when you're seeing all these people packed on this boat and and that? I mean, well. Uh, we were told no borders, nobody comes on board. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, we had to leave. <laughs> All those people, but they started jumping off the off the ship and coming towards the boats that you know had supplies on them. And, and uh, we were told not to. You know, not to pick them up. Just get away. Just go away. Once they started jumping off the boat, it was time to leave. The story that you just told, you know, is um, obviously a difficult story for you to tell, and it's still a very, a very powerful story to you, for you. Is that primarily because of the memory of the suffering that these people were experiencing? Or is that primarily a feeling that the orders came down that made it feel like you were abandoning these people who were so what, what, what is it about that story that makes it so powerful for you so difficult? Uh, you know their current predicament was was terrible yeah but uh, what was going to happen in 24 hours? What was going to happen in three days? Uh, you mean to the people on the boat to crammed the in like the boat, that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, especially since one of them was 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 not under power. So it's just floating around. It, well, they were they were they had they were run against a pier. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they were tied up, and. Uh, but, you know, knowing that we had food, but we, we didn't have enough for all of them. We couldn't take them on. We were not prepared to uh, take a mass exodus from land in Saigon. We were ready for a limited mission, and that was to get... Uh, what we could safely get. Uh, originally, we had planned on going up the river. Uh, up the Saigon River? Yeah, again. with yeah. all of our craft, you know, all, everybody. Yeah. And uh, because, you know, we could get 150 people probably in one of those boats pretty easily. Yeah. And uh, so that was a, one of the preliminary uh, yeah. options. And, and, uh, so we're just, you know, we didn't know. So anyhow, the people on the ship, we weren't ready to accept something like that. You know, there was yeah. nothing in place. Uh, 
you know, because like it was, you know, the Navy ships were there, but uh, how do you bring a couple thousand people from those two ships? Yeah. And then in the meantime, they're replaced by three or four more thousand right. people trying to get away. Yeah. And so, and so, one of the ships, both ships were tied to the dock, or one was tied to the yeah, dock. The, both, well, and one tied to the other. One tied to the other, and then they see you. You're pretty close. They start jumping off their ship, well, trying to get to your ship. They stayed. Well, no, we, we were in there in those uh, LCM eight boats. Oh, okay, in the smaller boats, yeah. And which you know had a, a cargo area probably fifty feet long or forty feet long. Yeah, and, and twelve feet wide, maybe. Yeah. And so if I have it right, you were bringing food to them, you were yes. bringing sea rats. Did uh -huh. you know that's what you were doing when you got in the boat? Oh, yeah. Okay, you knew, yeah. okay, we're bringing yeah. those boats, yeah. sea rats. Mm -hmm. How did you get the sea rats to them, the sea rations to them? Did you just... In, well, they were, they were dropped over the side on the ship okay. into those eight boats, and the two eight boats, and they went to the freighters and we went along, like I say, we had one boat that had uh, yeah. uh, Corman and, and a doctor. Okay. And, uh, but they were quickly overwhelmed and sure yeah, was. they, once they were on board, yeah. they realized it was way worse than they could do yeah. anything with. They left their supplies and. Did any of them try to get on? Did any of the South Vietnamese try to get onto the boat you were on? No, no, we were off. We were we were standing probably two hundred yards. Okay. No, we were off of the ship. Yeah. And probably a hundred yards off of the other boats. Okay. As we went in. Yeah. And uh, now the medic and the corpsman though they did actually did they take another craft to get onto that? Yeah, it was okay. it was the fourth. We had two sea rats, security, and the the corpsman, and they actually went up the ladder and. And went aboard, and uh, it wow. wasn't long. They came back, and and you know they, I can't really tell you how many sea rats made it to the ship, but yeah, you know probably half a dozen pallets, and wow. uh, but then you got to pull out when they start jumping out and trying to get on your boat on your, you know the landing craft, which they could have been pulled on. Maybe they could have crawled on, but probably not. You know, they were higher and high enough. Yeah. But uh, you very easily could have pulled them up. But then, yeah. what are you pulling up? Uh, one thing you have to think about is security. What are you pulling up? Is this guy? Is he? Is he really friendly? You know. Yeah, uh, and so. Yeah, and, you know, there's so many variables that we were told not to allow boarders. And just to, and so some of them are left treading water. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Is that part of what makes it a difficult story too? That you don't, you just don't know what happened, even to those people that jumped in the water. Yeah. Well, the whole you know the whole happened. thing. You know, there were, th and I'm sure it was reported, but I've never read the story. But there yeah. were a couple thousand people on those ships. Yeah. With nothing. Could you hear the South Vietnamese? We we were offshore you, far. You were you, too far out that you couldn't you couldn't hear. Oh, them. oh, you mean on the the boats? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was yeah, you know was occasionally tough. you'd hear a one sound that would be out of the ordinary, but it was kind of a drone. Yeah. You know, uh, everybody yeah. was hollering. You know. Sure. So you have this, and then you have the other, you know, what, what you hear about also is that South Vietnamese helicopters then start coming from nowhere unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So you're describing people jumping out of a boat trying to get to American, American boats to get out, and then you've got South Vietnamese helos that start coming from nowhere and just start landing on American ships. Did you mm -hmm. see that as well? I didn't actually, well... I saw a lot of helos land. I saw a lot of helos in the sky. Uh, a lot landed on the Thomaston. I didn't see the 
you know, pushing them off the side. Okay. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, there were just helos everywhere. I mean, so these helos landing on the Thompson, were they carrying some of the refugees. Americans, some of the refugees. Mm -hmm. Do you have any memory of these helos landing on the on the Thomaston? I mean, was this planned? Were we expecting these helos, or is this part of these wave of helos just coming out of the blue, landing on American? I don't ships? know what uh, I don't know what the, the command knew. Yeah. Uh, I know we were ready for something, something. There again, we were ready to do something. Yeah, and uh, they went to flight quarters, and uh, they started landing some, you know, and getting and, off the helos. In your memories, Vietnamese. Yes, yes, yes. So this, I think, this was part of it. Then. Yeah, I mean, this is part but, of that evacuation. Uh, mo we had a few uh, Americans or British or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. on board. But we had, uh, I don't remember how many we carried to, to the Philippines, but maybe maybe a hundred was all we carried. But as soon as it started happening, we went one alpha, which was, we were getting ready to float, you know, ballast down and, and uh, float the boats. So the folks, that came off the helicopters, they were frisked and everything documented. Right. And then led down to the boats. Yeah. And transferred to other ships. Okay. In the meantime, we're just staying out of the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, flight quarters are pretty dangerous. You can have a lot of things sure. happen. Yeah. And, uh, well, especially when you have helos coming out of the. Yeah. yeah, unexpectedly, right. flying in from South Vietnam. Um, at this time, did you feel like you were participating in something historic? I mean, did did it did it feel like did it feel like that? I mean, of course, we look back on it now, and documentaries have been made about about Operation Frequent Wind and that. At the time, did it feel like did it feel that way? Like this is a well a historic event. Uh, when when you're, you're up on <clears throat> on the bridge or whatever, and you look through the big eyes, and and everywhere you look are ships. Mm. Everywhere you look are ships. I don't know how many ships were there. Maybe well over a hundred. Yeah. You know there were freighters or passenger ships. There were uh, just all kinds of ships out there that yeah. weren't they weren't uh, military <clears throat> and uh, plus at least for a while a lot of helos in the air as well oh yeah yeah we had aircraft carriers we had air you know jets were flying you could see them up you, you know there was uh there was a presence sure you you knew there was a presence especially with a couple yeah uh, aircraft carriers sitting out there and yeah. And there's something getting ready to happen and, and Wow. What was the what was the um I'm trying to think of a better word than than oh what, what what was the atmosphere like? Did it did it feel like panic? Or was everything kinda of calm and no we how would you we describe had it? jobs to do. Yeah. You know. Uh when you have a job to do and you know how to do your job. Yeah. I mean that's part of it, you know, and, and so it was uh, it was very orderly. The ship knew what they were going to do, you know, in, in this this or this scenario. Yeah. Be it by land, be it by water, be it by air. Right. You know, we yeah. had our they had their contingency plans, so we yeah. all. And then when we started getting air. Uh, the helos start coming in. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> they did all the documentation. They did the frisking. Yeah, uh, disarmed them and, and sure. identified them as best they could. Right. And uh, 
The the South Vietnamese who came out. Yes. Yeah. So so it didn't feel like panic to you. It didn't it felt pretty orderly. It felt like it, things it, were under control. It it was. I mean, yeah. we we had jobs to do. We had right. Uh, we we rode along the boats for security. Right. My team. You know the. the we had. Uh, UDT SEAL team with us. We had, uh, I think it was UDT 11 and SEAL Team 1. They made up about 20 some people on our ship. Special Forces there, and, just in uh, case, yeah. They were always with us. They, during if it was assault, they yeah. would go in first and survey yeah. the beach, survey the, the water, you know, the yeah. landing area. Do you, do you, I'm oh, sorry. And then, uh, uh, and then we, you know, the Marines go in, and we go in, and we put the Marines in. If, yeah, if, if that needed to happen. Yeah. Well, that, that gets to the question I was going to ask. Um, as you're watching, you know, you've got this scene of these people who obviously are terrified, you know, because the North Vietnamese are now in Saigon. Mm -hmm. uh, South Vietnam is clearly done. People are fleeing, they're scared to death. Um, do you remember, was there talk like, you know, hey, we've got some aircraft carriers here, let's just bomb, bomb the mess out of them, you know? Or, or was there more of a resignation, you know? Hey, I mean, I guess the question I'm getting at is, you know, you've got young sailors, Marines, um, was that part of the conversation? Like, you know, look, the, you know, the North Vietnamese are in, are in Saigon, we've got the carriers here, let's bomb the mess out of them. Or was there more of a resignation, it's over and let's just do what we can and get out? You have to understand that we were out at sea. Yeah. There's no internet. There's no radio. So you don't really know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. on. Yeah, you don't know. You get your mail. Uh, yeah. You know, it might be two weeks, you know, in the, in the stream before it gets to you. Yeah. Uh, and that partially could be intentional, you know, yeah. so that the home team doesn't keep you abreast of what's going on. Yeah. And uh, we didn't really have any idea what was going to happen. Uh, yeah. We didn't know how close the North Vietnamese were to Saigon. Uh, all we knew was we were going to do an evacuation. We heard. Our, after we pulled out, uh, some of our Marines were at the embassy. Some of the Marines That's that right. were uh, stationed on the uh, Thomaston. Yeah, yeah. And so, <clears throat> on the way back to the Philippines, uh, several days, four days, or whatever, we got to uh, you know got to find out kind of some of the details, of what happened. Um. And uh, oh, so some of the Marines from your ship were the Marines yes. sent to the embassy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What do you remember? Any things that they said, or it was just how way? how uh, uh, the people were just they were, they just kept coming. They just kept coming. to the embassy. They were everywhere. They were everywhere, and they had to keep their little areas secure. And, and yeah, you know. And yeah. it was so, they described it as being so, uh, you know, people were shoving their kids, throwing their kids over, you know, fencing. And, you know. The South Vietnamese were, were trying to, they're saying, if you can't get me, take my take, kids. Exactly. To That's the, why the baby the Marines, flights, the you know, the baby flights were a big deal. Uh, a lot of aircraft full of babies left. That's another they operation, shut. isn't it? I, yeah, if I remember right, it wasn't baby called. Lift. Yeah. And before they shut down the Thompson, you know, for the air base was closed. Yeah. And then they went uh, by helicopter and they knew we were out there, so here they come. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you know something big is going on and. Yeah. and but after day and a half or whatever it is, we weighed anchor and we left. Off you go. 
And by that point, the South Vietnamese who'd come to your ship on the helos, they had been sent to other, we, other ships. And we kept uh, maybe about a hundred, maybe a hundred on the top. And of where do you take them? You take them to the Philippines. We took them to yeah. to Subic Subi Bay. You look back at what everything took place. Yeah. And uh, what have we gained? Mm. Uh, you know, I've gained a lot of memories, a lot of. A lot of treasure memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> hmm. what have we gained uh, as a country from Vietnam? And, and that mm -hmm. was uh, for the common folk, nothing. Yeah. I mean, we didn't stop the spread of communism. You know. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, Are these thoughts that you've had? In retrospect, looking back, or did, or I mean, did you have thoughts like this at the time as well? You know, now we're steaming. We're no longer off the coast of Vietnam. Now we're heading towards Subic Bay. You're listening to the Marines talk about what they saw in Saigon. You got the hundred Vietnamese on your ship. You saw what you saw. Are you having those kind of thoughts at that time? Like, what is all this? Yeah, about? yeah. I, I was. Uh, when we were at sea, the ship was short one gunner's mate, yeah. and I was the team gunner's mate, so yeah. uh, our officer thought it might be good if I, I might want to strike as a gunner's mate, but I, you know, a team gunner's mate, we only had like 20 M16s and a couple M60s and some yeah. M79s, so it wasn't a lot of stuff, you know. Yeah. But. Uh, he wanted to offer that to me, so I did. I, yeah. I did maintenance on one of the mounts. And uh, <clears throat> steaming back to the Philippines, a uh, Vietnamese colonel would come out. There were areas they could go. And uh, there was a Vietnamese colonel that would come out and sit down right there by my mount. Wow. And uh, it got over time. We talked, you know, and, and he was telling how his his family had gotten out, and uh, he finally got out too. But uh, uh, but he didn't know where they were. Oh wow! Uh, but they were, you know, they had gotten out. Had got out of something, and uh, so he gave me a a few bills from Vietnam and uh, he said, well, if this were, uh, you know, four days ago or whatever it was a week ago, we said this would be a lot of money, but <laughs> wow. it's not where they ain't now. That government's gone. Yep. And just talking to him, you picked up on kind of just this sense of loss. It was, you know, he told me how how everything had gone. I mean, it was it was a lost cause. Mm. Uh, he told you that. Yeah, it was a lost cause. It it uh, you know these people resisted uh, way too long. Uh, the South Vietnamese did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When when uh, looking back in hindsight, it's twenty twenty four, but. Yeah. The when we pulled out in, in you know like seventy three, uh, at that point in time we should have made we should have realized that we have a whole lot of sympathizers here. What's going to happen to them when we leave? I've asked a couple vets. I've shown them that famous photo of the you know that helo on the top of that small building and people are scrambling up the steps. I said, what does this photo bring to mind? And you know, they usually what you hear is betrayal. You know, we, we betrayed an ally. Is that, do you feel that way too? You know, that partly you've got, on the one hand it was something we shouldn't have got into, but we did get it. Here's what they would say. It's something we probably, a war we probably shouldn't have got into. Certainly we should have fought it in a different way than it was fought. But we did get into it, we had an ally, and we left that ally in the lurch. Is that, does that kind of describe how you feel? Well, like I said earlier, you know, 
we were pulling out and we should have had some sort of a plan to aid our uh, uh, our the people that helped us, our allies in South Vietnam. Yeah. You know, there were a lot of them and there are a lot of things that we could have done. Uh, you know, we could have had an orderly uh, evacuation if it was done in 1973. You could have had a, an orderly evacuation of 20,000 people. You could have had that. These because, would be, yeah. yeah, because the, the, the Vietnam, North Vietnamese were still, you know, they were north. Yeah, and you're talking about evacuating folks who, you know, clearly were with the United States, like this South Vietnamese colonel, for exactly. example, obviously an American. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they were uh, naked men running down the street. You know, in their underwear. They they didn't want they oh, didn't want that uniform. They'd rip their uniforms off. Yeah. They didn't want the NBA to see them. Yeah. They didn't yeah. want the uniform. Yeah. Cause it and you know often there are people that that turned and said, hey, in, 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 in. yeah. Oh, I've talked to them. I've talked to South Vietnamese veterans in Vietnam, and you know they they went to the reeducation camps. Mm -hmm. They had to go to the reeducation camps. When you look back on that time, you know, really these last two weeks of April, first in Cambodia, the much smaller operation, South Vietnam, the much bigger operation, what's the image that most sticks in your mind? What's the, what's the most powerful image for you, or the, the thing that, that, is, that most sticks out in your mind of that, that, those operations? Well, first of all, it was uh, the contender. The folks on that boat? Yeah. And then it's just the amazing, uh, the amazing power, the amazing uh, command we had of the air hmm. with, you know, the helicopters coming in. Yeah. They are so. Uh, they're just so massive, and 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 then you have these people streaming off of them. That it's that's it's a paradox, though, because you're describing what's true. I mean, the Seventh Fleet—that's incredible power—and yet at the same time, it's right off the coast of a poor country. Yeah. And a, a war that's lost. How do you put that together? You've got such incredible power, and yet, and yet, such a disaster. You tuck your tail and run. I guess. I guess yeah, that's, that's the way just... some people think. I think a little bit differently. Like I told you, I thought that we had resigned. We had basically given up the war. When we, when America pulled out, it's like, yeah, good luck, guys. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you um, you uh, sharing this with me. I've, I've I've never talked to another veteran who was there at the very end. I've got a little and bit so more to appreciate add. that. Oh, please do. I do. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Made another cruise uh, in 1976 on the USS Point Defiance. And one day we're steaming along. And we heard the whistle, whistles blow and, and you know, whatever their little commands were. And uh, we went to, uh, it was a heightened state of security. And uh, Way off in the distance, you know, we started heading, we changed course and started heading towards something. It was dark, you could see, and yeah. couldn't get to the bridge, so couldn't see. But we pulled up on three World War II LSTs. Hmm. And this is in 19, this is in August or September maybe of 76. And 
one of them had power, and it was pulling the other two along, and mm. they were plumb full of Vietnamese people. Wow. In 1976. Roughly, where were you? I mean, where were where were they going? Were they on their way to the Philippines they were or probably Guam? that direction? Yeah, yeah. probably towards Philippines. So what did you what did you do? Uh, we came alongside and asked basically if there was anything we could do, you know, easily if they needed whatever, you know. And I, I'm I'm pretty sure we did give them, you know, maybe some medical supplies or something, but we didn't. We didn't board them. There was, they were. I'm sure the the captains were talking. I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, we probably gave them some kind of aid, but I don't remember. We didn't wow. uh, bow us down or anything. So. so this is '76, and then I mentioned my own ship, the carrier USS Ranger, 1988, I think, '88 or '89. We came across a boat of yeah. Vietnamese refugees. So this yeah. this goes on. This goes on. Fifteen years long time. after we left, they're still fleeing the country. You know, this is a pretty amazing, amazing story that that you were part of. So I really appreciate you. you, you talking and about and it. you know it's not, yeah it's nice to hear. Thanks for your service. But I can still remember we weren't supposed to go to town out by ourselves. Once you get back to the States? Take you, take go to town and take your buddy with you. And not be in uniform? Oh yeah, we didn't we didn't go out in uniform. Was this in San Diego? Yes. And this 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 is when I first got to Beachmasters in '74. Is that's the way it was, you know, because we had short hair, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I was the same as them. The only difference was I had short hair, and I was in the military. Did you experience some of that? Absolutely, the absolutely. Yeah. Every weekend about the Balboa Park. Like what, what kind of stuff? Uh, you know, you got some guys come along, you know, like I said, guys just like me, you know, out there drinking beer, you know, and, and it's like, hey, baby killers, and you, you know, just just crap, just what, what, antagonizedness. What did you do? Well, you know, People get their nose in each other's face, you know, game on. And uh, so you got to some scraps? Often. Often. Yeah, yeah. If I could, um, you know, identify one of those folks, because I have talked to some over the years, you know, who are on the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, they look back on that with regret. If I could get you together with one of those folks, what what would you say now? Well, I I, I guess it depends on the other person. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I was doing what I thought was right. I was doing. I was doing what I thought was right. Yeah. I was I was preserving our country. Yeah. Preserving our way of life, preserving, you know, this is this is our life. You know, we've got to do what we've got to do to keep our country on top. Yeah. You know, and you know, my brothers were all in the service, and what you know, it was just part of the deal. Yeah. I mean, the draft looming over your head is a pretty big decider. Sure. And uh, hmm. I wouldn't have gone. Yeah. Had I not, you know, signed up. So. Yeah. But uh, uh, I went. I served. I was proud. Hmm. Uh, there were days I hated every day of it. Couldn't wait to get out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there were days that I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, I to this day am proud I went. Yeah. So I appreciate that. And you know, for all the loss,
there were the Vietnamese that you helped get out. Yeah, sure. You know, and some of them, you know, maybe some of them ended up here at Fort Chafee and not far from here, and you know, now, sure, they, now they have a good lives. So that's an important thing. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.